Good afternoon and ni hao from Nanjing, one of China's oldest and most culturally significant cities. We're going to walk about, check out a few of the sites and explore some of its deep, dark history. Let's get into it. All right, Confucius. For those of you who don't know, he was a philosopher 2,500 years ago and was a very important figure in establishing Chinese culture. Well, Japanese, Vietnamese, most of Asia. Here is one of four Confucius temples you can find in China. Let's take a gander. The Confucius Temple was originally built in 1034 and throughout the years it sustained a bit of damage, the worst coming in 1937 when the Japanese flattened it. The Chinese government decided to rebuild the temple in 1984. Now thousands of worshippers come here every year to pay respect. Happy New Year. Happy New Year boss, how are you? I thought I'd read out a few Confucian quotes for you. Number one, everything has beauty, but not everyone sees it. Number two, what the superior man seeks is in himself. What the small man seeks is in others. Number three, it does not matter how slowly you go, so long as you do not stop. And that was the Confucius Temple. When they rebuilt it in 1984, they decided to make it a full-on tourist attraction. And built, I guess what you'd call a mini town around it. Beautiful lanterns, old style Chinese buildings. And right here, you have the riverbank of the Qinghui River, which is also very popular in Nanjing. Maybe we can do a tour. Let's check it out. So far, so good. Do they have an audio track that won't be quiet? It's all. As soon as I say that, it goes quiet. It's all in Chinese, so I'm baffled if I know what they're saying. However, I did read this river is considered the lifeblood of Nanjing. It has the inner river and the outer river. The inner river navigates its way through the city. Many little canals. And the outer river is like a large moat around the city. Originally established as a defense infrastructure, defense mechanism against invading cities and towns way back in the day. Hard case. We go through all these famous parts in the city, seeing famous temples, famous walls, parts of the river, the canal. But then you just go through someone's backyard, neighborhoods, people having barbecues, people doing their washing. All good. The full Nanjing experience. Nanjing, Nanjing. <laughs> And that was the Nanjing River Cruise. Not bad, 60 quai, 40 minutes. 
drove around the city saw a variety of bridges temples buildings not sure how it's going to come up on camera but all good right let's see what else the city has to offer The Nanjing City Wall, built as a military fortification by the Ming Dynasty around the 17th century. It's a little different from other walls in China. It's built in four tiers, runs for six kilometers, and has 13 gates. Very popular in the city, worth checking out, especially because of its scenic lake views. What's up, bro? Oh, you are so cool. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> True story. As you can see, many locals enjoying their afternoon out on a paddle boat. We've got some good music playing down the walk paths, walkways, and we even have a McCafe. I'm loving it. Nanjing has a very long and complicated history. So instead of trying to cover it all in one video, I thought I'd reel off a few facts for you. So one, Nan means south. Jing means capital, Nanjing. Funnily enough, Beijing, northern capital. Six dynasties have ruled here from the third century right through to 1947. It currently has a population of about nine and a half million and is a center hub for education and research in China. Good. <laughs> Good morning and day two from Nanjing. We ran out of daylight yesterday at the wall. So I thought we'd take it easy, finish the video today. Now we're walking up to Dr. San Yitz Mausoleum. He's famous for shaping Chinese culture and part of the Chinese democratic movement. Mate, getting a workout in today. Bloody hell. Anyway, Dr. San Yit was a revolutionary, political philosopher, and physician. He's revered both by the Communist Party and the National Party, known as the father of the nation. He was responsible for overthrowing the Qing Dynasty in 1911 and was China's, well, the Republic of China's, first president. Now, let's check out his mausoleum. The mausoleum stands on top of the Purple Mountain. Cracking views of the surrounding area, Nanjing. Now, all I can think is these stairs would be perfect to do some sprints. Get that heart rate up. But on the other hand, not today. Ooh, not today. Unfortunately, there are no cameras allowed inside. So I'll do my best, give you a description, and we can get out. Not sure what to expect. Never been in a mausoleum before. Looks impressive from the outside though. It's 
not quite what I was expecting. His body wasn't laid out in a crystal coffin like you get of Mao in Tiananmen Square. Instead, there was a large statue and his body was encased at the bottom. I guess you could call it a tomb. The roof was very impressive. It was tiled with a beautiful mosaic of the sun overlooking Nanjing. And that was Nanjing. We got around on the canals, just saw a mausoleum, hung out at the Confucius temple. Great times, really enjoyed myself. The weather's fantastic too, not too cold. Anyway guys, until next time, Zai Zhang.